So a question like this is quite easy because you've got a sin on both sides. So what you do is you just cancel the sin and then you say x minus 20 is equal to x. But now you don't want to go solve that. That's what a lot of students try and do. What we now do is we go work in the different quadrants. And we could treat this one on the right, for example, as our reference angle. And there was no negatives in the front of the sin. So it's where sin is positive. So that's going to be quadrant number one and quadrant number two. So we would say x minus 20 equals and x minus 20 equals. In quadrant two, it's always 180 minus your reference angle, which in this case is just x. And then you say plus k times 360, k is an element of z. In quadrant one, there is no 180 minus, 180 plus. You just put your reference angle immediately, k is an element of z. You then get x alone. What you would find on this left hand side is that if you had to move x over, you would end up with 0 is equal to 20 and then plus the rest. That doesn't make sense, so this is a no solution. For this one on the right hand side, you would bring the minus x over where it will become positive and so you'd end up with 2x is equal to 200 plus k times 360. k is an element of z. You could then get x alone as 100 plus k times 180 k is an element of z. Now that is called the general solution, but they've given us an interval to work in. So we need to go a little bit further. So we're going to plug in values for, for k, such as minus 1, 0, 1, 2, all the integer values. That's why we say integers. So if x is 0, then I mean if k is 0, you're just going to get 100. If k is 1, you're going to get 280. If k was minus 1, you would get a negative, which is outside of the interval. And if k was 2, you would get 460, which is too big. And so these are the two answers.